So this is all the Halloween blocks we've done for the Moda Midnight Moon Quilt Along so far. That's a lot of blocks. I don't even have the new ones up yet. So this is going to be a great quilt. Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts and this is week 10 of the Moda Midnight Moon Quilt Along. And I have to imagine that if you're here, you love Halloween as much as I do. And I love Halloween. Um, I think what I'm going to do is start sharing a few stories about why I love Halloween so much over the next few videos. Because I have to, I really have to think that if you're here watching this, you probably love Halloween too. So one of my first things I want to talk about why I love Halloween was because as kids, and this was in the 70s when I grew up and was doing most of my trick-or-treating. We lived in a we lived in a neighborhood that had a bunch of houses right next to the elementary school. So my friends would come over and their families would come over and trick-or-treat from our house. So we just had a bunch of people dressed up, running around this neighborhood with our dads going for candy and just having a ball and then coming back and dumping our pillowcases out with our candy and then just start swapping candy and then we would have to go up and get to go to school the next day because back in the 70s they, you didn't have the day after halloween off at least my kids when i was raising my kids they always had the day after halloween off so they could stay up late and do things but you know, we got to stay up late, we got to eat candy, we got to have fun with our friends, there was pumpkin pie, there was Halloween decorations, it was dark, it was fun. So that was just a great memory from my childhood that makes me love Halloween so much. And I've got a lot more reasons why I love Halloween, but that's one of them. So there you go, a little bit of my personal life. But anyway, now we are on week 10. Um, and a bonus block. So we've got our bonus block here of the Plump Pumpkin from April Rosenthal and this is super fun and super easy to put together and it does help you get ready for this block here. This block is not hard at all. It's it's time consuming but it's not hard at all and I love that checkerboard look especially with the orange going down here. It just and I used all candy corn. And then we've got the Southern Star, which maybe you have this issue. There always seems to be, there just seems to sometimes be a block where I just can't wrap my head around it. And as you can see, all of these look different. They're all beautiful. They all look great in my quilt, but they all look different because I just had a hard time. And maybe you didn't, but for some reason I had a hard time just kind of wrapping my head around how to put this block together. And it's just basically the layout of the colors. Um, that's the issue, nothing else. Um, the block isn't hard to put together. It was just like, I got A's and B's and I've got colors and I've got points and they've got to go opposite of each other, at least according to the pattern. And I didn't do that over here. I did it over here, but then when I got to this one, I ended up with orange and black on opposite ends. So it just was like, I just, for me, it was just a little bit difficult. And, the, and it's not a difficult block to assemble, just figuring those colors out. But you can see it still is a cool looking block, even though I ended up with orange and black on each side, or I ended up with the same pattern on each side. I mean, it just still is a cool looking block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm walking you through this, not too hard, then I'm walking you through this and I'm just showing you my little shortcomings. So we still get the block put together, but we get the, um, get the right size it's it's a great looking block it's just I told you my shortcomings and then I walk you through this which isn't that's not too long either because each block is exactly the same um, it just takes a little bit of time so let's get started on our week 10 and bonus block of the midnight moon quilt along so if you're new here and you like uh, Halloween and you want to see how this ends up and you want to go along with this journey, hit subscribe below, hit the bell to get notified every time I put up a new video. Um, you can go to my website and you can sign up for my newsletter and get notified that way. But uh, so yeah, let's get started with our box.
Okay, so to get started on this free pattern that's been put out by April Rosenthal for the Moda Midnight Moon Quilt Along, uh, looks pretty easy. So I've got my um, pieces already cut. This is the, for the pumpkin. These are marked on the diagonal here because these are going to be the corners of the pumpkin. Stem, leaf, and then all the background pieces I'm going to need. So what we want to do is get started here with uh, these corners. We're going to put them in all four corners. And we are going to sew on that diagonal line and then trim a quarter of an inch away from it and then iron towards the corner. And then we'll have the shape, we'll have a pumpkin shape after it's all said and done. So there, I'm going to get all these sewn at once. Got my seams, I'm going to uh, cut a quarter of an inch away from that seam. Iron it out to make that pumpkin shape. Okay, there's our pumpkin. Now for the uh, the leaf, which is this larger gray piece, we're going to do the same thing. And I forgot to mark those. These are smaller, but we're going to sew them on in the corner. And then we should have like a leaf pattern. And we're done. is our leaf right there. Yep, so let's take our stem and we're going to put it on the left side of our leaf here. Sew it on. And it doesn't look like there's any matching seams, so it really doesn't matter how you press any of your items. You can press them open, you can press them to the side. I'm pressing mine to the side. So there's my leaf and my stem. So now we're going to take the larger background piece that's the, uh, what is this, two inches? It's the same size as this here and we're going to put that on, against the stem and sew that on. And I am going to press towards the dark, which is the stem. And then on the other side goes the other shorter piece. And I am going to iron that towards the leaf. So next we take the shorter background pieces and we're going to put those on either edge of our pumpkin. You can just line this up edge to edge. And I'm going to do both sides at once. And I'm just going to iron this towards the edge. So next up is so it says to square your block up at the end but I had to square this I had to get this to eight and a half it was longer than eight and a half so now these pieces will fit much better so just take note of that you'll probably have to trim this section before you put these pieces on and then we're just going to sew these pieces on press them We'll just have one piece left to put on. And we can get these pressed. And I'm just going to press towards each of these strips. And 
Last thing left to do is to add this strip on. And then we'll square it up to eight and a half. going to iron that towards the strip also. I'm going to spritz it just a little to get it to lay flatter. There we go! Squared it up to eight and a half. Super cute, super easy block to put together. Didn't hardly take any time at all. Probably took just as much time to cut all the pieces as it did to assemble the block, but it is the bonus block for, for Moda Midnight Moon Quilt Along, um, and it's free by April Rosenthal, which is Prairie Grass Patterns. So I'll leave a link below for this. Okay, so here we go with the checkerboard um, block for the Midnight Moon Quilt Along, and it's a uh, it's just, it's a little time consuming, but it's not really hard at all. I've already got the small and the medium size done. And they just have you cut 36 of these background blocks and then three each of a color. And um, black, orange, and gray is what they had, so that's what I did. And uh, I did all candy corn. So. To get started with this block, it's not going to be hard at all. You're going to take your, in my case, candy corn block, and I am going to take my background and I'm going to lay it right sides together with my line uh, cutting off this corner over here. And I'm going to put both of these on so that I can go over and I can sew both at the same time. So that's how you're going to set up all of these blocks over here. We're going to sew all these on and then we're going to cut a quarter of an inch away from the seam and then we're going to iron towards the corner. So I'm going to get all of these here ready to go, get them sewn, and we'll come back. Okay, now that we have them all sewn on, we are going to trim them down a quarter of an inch from the seam we just sewed. And that's pretty simple to do. Just use your ruler and put it on the quarter inch line and trim it up. And then from here we just need to iron towards the corner. And then we're going to repeat for these corners with the rest of our pile here. So set your seam and just carefully iron towards that corner. And we are back to a square. Now we have these ironed, we're ready to repeat for the other side. Exactly the same thing. Lay your corners right sides together with your seam line cutting the corner off. And I'm going to set all these up again to sew to a chain piece. Well, I had to take a break here, so I think you can see why. My little black cat decided to sabotage my Halloween quilt. Okay, so we've got our other sides put on, ironed back. I've trimmed these up. Um, I'm on the last one that I'm trimming here. Most of them end up pretty much three inches, so there isn't too much to trim. And, you know, if you make, if you draw your diagonal lines before you start, you know, pretty much corner to corner, and you line up your blocks really nicely with the corners back here with the colored block, and you stay on that line, it will end up, you'll end up with a pretty square block. So, I want to try to keep all my candy corn. Since I used all candy corn, go in the same direction. I was unsuccessful, and I don't know how I did it wrong, but this one I didn't do. This one I did do. I got all my candy corns going the same way. 
I must have got distracted or something on the first one. So we are going to lay it out with gray and black and then orange. And then we want our colors to be on the diagonal here. So black and then orange and then gray and then orange. So we have the orange on the middle diagonal. And then we have our grays lined up here. All my candy corns go in the same way. So now we just have a nine patch we need to put together. So we're going to put our rows together and we're going to iron the top and bottom rows to the left and the middle row to the right. So take your um, blocks, line up these points, and then pin it. And I'm going to do this with three of my rows first two pieces and three of my rows. Chain piece them, come back, and we'll add the last piece. Okay, I've got my first side sewn, and this is our middle one. This is our bottom one, like this. And then this is our top one. So there really is no way other than to kind of remember which rows are which, so you can get them ironed in the right spots or the right way. So top row we're going to iron to the left, which means we are going to iron towards the gray piece. So get this laid back out correctly. And now we'll do the same thing to add these third pieces on. Okay, I finished my rows, ironed them the seam in the same direction as the first seam. I'm going to get these lined back up. And now we're going to put our rows together and our seams will nest. That is not correct. That is correct. I knew that because my seams didn't nest. So I'm going to line up the seams between the blocks and nest those and then see how my points look. Make sure they line up the best I can. You just got to do the best you can. this sewn and we are going to iron towards the center row. Look out snippers, they got to see. They got to see honey. And iron towards the center row. Okay, got my uh, row sewn and I'm going to iron towards the center which is has the orange square in it or diamond, whatever you want to call it. This is how it goes, and then this is how the last row is going to go on. And I got all my candy corn going the right way, so. Oh, look at that. I ironed the seam wrong. How did I do that? perfectly honest mistake. Now we can put these together and nest those seams. Hi Snoop. You helping me out? Are you helping me? Well, that was a good boy. Yes you are. And check my points after I get these seams nested. So this at a quarter of an inch and iron towards the center row. And there we go. We're going to iron this towards the center row. Okay, I've got my block put together. I've got my rows ironed towards the center row. Uh, let's check out our size and trim it up if necessary. 
That looks pretty good. I'll just give it a little trim. Get those little fluffs taken off. Line it up. There we go. And there is our checkerboard block for the Midnight Moon Quilt Along. Not too hard. Probably takes a whole lot longer to cut this and to put these corners on. Mark the diagonals. But that's a cool looking block too. I like that. That looks really cool. And here is the medium and the small. Good job! Okay, we have the Southern Star Block. And to be brutally honest, I just, uh, the directions were a little bit hard for me on this one for some reason. Maybe not for you, but for me, obviously this block I did correct. This block I didn't do correct, even though it looks fine. I mean, it really does. It looks fine. These fabrics are supposed to kind of be opposite of each other in the star, where when I laid it out, I put them on the same sides. Does it look bad? No. It looks fine. <laughs> um, so I am going to make it so it looks like this one on my big block. So we've got our A, B, C's, and D's, just like in the pattern that she tells us. And for C, I've chosen these two fabrics. And for D, I've chosen these two fabrics. A is what we're going to pair with these, and B is the corners right here. And on A, you will draw a diagonal line on the back. So, to get started, we start with C. And we're going to take one of our C's from each color and put it right sides together with our A. And I'm going to get them all ready because I'm going to chain piece. So, Take another A and the other C, put them together, and at this point, that line we drew is the guide so that we're going to do quarter of an inch seams on each side of it. So I'm going to get that done, and then we cut it apart, and then we iron it towards the uh, dark color. Okay, so I've sewn quarter of an inch away from that center line on both sides and we are now going to just cut right along that line so we end up with two pieces and then we are going to iron that towards the dark so I am going to trim my tails off And these are complete. We have two of each. And these are going to be the points out on the outside here. That's what we built right here. And now we're going to do the same thing for the other points with the D fabric. Take one of each. We're going to do exactly the same thing for D as we did for C. We're going to put these together, right sides together, so a quarter of an inch seam on either side of the line that we have here, that diagonal line. We're going to trim it up and iron towards the dark fabric. Okay, I've got my D points done. So that's what I'm going to call them. These are my C points, these are my D points. C points are these. D points are these cats. So 
So the next thing we do is take our C's and D's and put them together. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is put our C's and our D's together. So here's C's, here's D's, and we need to draw a diagonal line on the back of our C's. And then we put our core, we put our C with the coordinating D fabric. I think this is where I was getting confused. So we'll see if I end up. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm having a hard time visualizing this. I would call this my D coordinating fabric. So we're going to put these right sides together and sew a quarter of an inch on either side of this seam, cut it, and just iron it one way. Is the moment of truth since for some reason this block is just a brain teaser for me. Let's get our corners and start laying this out. So there's a corner. And our C's were the circles. So we need a C block to go like this. And then we need a D block, which is the cats, to go like that. And that's how it has to go because then we need to do this. So that's looks like I'm going to have a black and an orange corner. It's still going to be great. And hopefully you have a better time visualizing this. So I need to put this together where I've got a D block and a C block. And then one of these needs to go in like this. So now this bottom one needs to needs to be the opposite. So I need the orange half moons and the orange cats to be on the opposite side. And then so there's that corner. Oh, it's going to be a cool looking block. Not what the picture is, but it's still going to be cool. All three of these are going to be different. I don't know. This was a brain teaser for me. And then like this. I'm going to put the four corners together. Just rows of two here. Iron towards the dark. Iron towards. So you're going to iron towards the half triangle block with the background. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to have all four corners put together. I don't have my corners put together. I just wanted to remind you that the easiest way for me to remember how to iron these was I am ironing towards the half square triangle that has the background on all of these pieces. So when you're picking it up, you can see where you're at and just go, I need to go towards the half square triangle with the background. That's how I need to iron these. And now, these seams here will nest together, which will make it easier, make your points look better. And then we are ironing these towards the, the row that has the solid patch. Okay, here's my corners and we're always going to iron towards the row <clears throat> with the solid patch. Here are our corners. And now we are going to... So here's our corners and now we're going to put our corners together and even though she has you <clears throat> obviously iron towards the solid patch that is not what we want to do. So one of these I'm going to iron the opposite way. Okay, Now we have seams that will nest. 
I mean, I've looked at this pattern, and I just don't see where she tells me to do something else. So... Same up here. Let's iron this one over here the other way. And then she has us on this one doing it towards the opposite. So if you iron towards the black, you will have up in my case it's the black. You'll have I'll have opposite seams here. Okay? Since my blacks are going to be on the opposite sides of each other, I'm going to iron everything towards my black side. And now we can put our two halves together. That's going to be a cool looking block. And we can nest our seams. And uh, these seams don't nest, and they didn't before. It's just the nature of this beast, I think. So I'm just going to turn it so it does nest. And same thing over here. Turn my seam back over so it does nest. And we will sew this, and we are going to iron in one direction. good. Pretty close to what I need. Not quite, but it will work. There is my Southern Star block, which seemed to throw my brain for a loop. I think the little one is how the pattern actually is. This one has two oranges here, two blacks there, and the same, well not the same here, two oranges here, two blacks there. This one has the oranges in one corner and the blacks in the other corner, so... I don't know. I don't know what it was about this block. Just threw me for a loop, but it's done. They work. They're beautiful. They're going to look gorgeous in my quilt. So leave some pictures in the Facebook post about this um, block and let me know what colors you used, how it worked for you. Did you understand the directions better than I did? I, you probably did. This is just one of those. I think we all have one of those blocks that throws us for a loop. So there we go. Checkerboard and Southern Star blocks for this week. So there you go. You saw how I struggled a little bit with this block, but it still is a beautiful block. So it's not like, it's not like I did struggle, but I did. But that's what we're here for. We all have our struggles. That one was mine. So Thank you for watching this video, thank you for coming along for this journey, and thank you for listening to my personal little Halloween story. I appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video.